In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. ever living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those who are pleased to make new and holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. The Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
first letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth, and reassure our hearts before him, and whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own, unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. A couple of months ago, parishioners of our here at Our Lady of Mount Carmel took the time to paint an icon that is titled Christ the True Vine. It was based on a description that I'd given of the icon, and this parishioner, from memory, painted that icon. It is here on a little pedestal right in front of the church. It might be difficult depending on where you are to see it, but perhaps on your way out, if you take this side door, you can take a moment to stop and look at just how much work that she put in to crafting that icon. It is depicting Jesus in the very center of that icon, in the central branch with all the other apostles of the church gathered around Jesus on all smaller branches that are all coming off of that central branch. It's a very common icon of the church and has been around for some time. And I think it's a very important one, an important image that we can use as we reflect on our gospel today. To keep a vine healthy, 
requires a great amount of experience and a lot of careful work. I remember reading, for example, not too long ago, an article that was talking about the after effects of those terrible fires in California, which happened last summer in 2020. All those terrible fires which destroyed a great deal of forests, but also had a profound effect on many vineyards throughout the state of California. Much of the crops for those vineyard owners had to be pruned way back. Many of the branches had, been, had to be cut away. Otherwise, any of the wine that that vineyard produced would eventually have a taste of ash and fire, you know, and that whole vintage would be just completely ruined. Thankfully, all of those vineyard workers are experts at pruning back their vines. They have been for centuries. The whole process of making wine hasn't really changed all that much. This is why Jesus can use this example of him as the central vine in our gospel today. That imagery of vineyards has been a very common symbol throughout history. Every year, vineyard owners need to carefully survey all of their vines, and they have to prune back any of the excess branches, far more of the plant than I would have ever realized. At the very end, there's very little left of that original vine. So much of it has to be pruned away. And yet, it is precisely because of that that much fruit is able to be produced. Now, you would think that when a branch is reduced all the way to its central stock, that it wouldn't be able to survive. But the reality is just the opposite. The more that you cut back a plant, the more it encourages future growth for the next season. Jesus wants that exact same growth to happen in each of our lives of faith. He wants us to produce fruit in the form of good deeds for the kingdom of heaven. But in order for that to happen, Jesus reminds us of two very important truths for us today. First, it is that we have to remain connected to that central vine, that central branch, as it were. Just like when you pluck off the leaf of a tree, it remains green for a day or so, but eventually it begins to turn discolored and eventually it begins to wither away. So too, if we distance ourselves from Christ, we lose his grace, we lose that support, and eventually we too will become withered as well. That process of becoming connected to that central branch, that process of being grafted to Christ, happens especially at our baptism. Sometimes that happens when we are very, very young, but other times it happens when we're older. Perhaps when we were older as an adult, we had a conversion to the faith, much like we had at Easter time this past few weeks. In our first reading today, we see that St. Paul, for example, despite having a terrible, had been a terrible persecutor of the church, he was totally changed. He was a different person, and he became connected to that central vine of Christ. The other disciples were afraid at first, for sure, but as St. Paul begins to preach about Christ, they realize, and it becomes clear, that he is truly a different person. Even though those Hellenists in our first reading tried to put him to death, St. Paul continued to boldly proclaim that Christ is indeed the Lord of the universe. Remain in me, Jesus tells us, as I remain in you. Without God, we can do nothing. We remain connected to Christ by those saving sacraments that he left us, the sacraments of the church that we receive. But that's only half of the picture. So we return back to that example of Jesus that he gave at the beginning, that in order to produce great fruit, we must be cut back, as it were, we too must be pruned to produce even greater works that God has in store for us. You know what's a very interesting thing about those vineyards in California is that on the surface, if you were to go up to those plants, you wouldn't necessarily think that there's anything wrong in those vineyards. You could have taken a grape off of that vine and eaten it, it would have been very sweet, and it would have seemed like it would have been perfectly fine. You could have, again, at the surface, just said, no, all of these vineyard plants are all fine. Just make wine with them anyway. However, the damage that that smoke from those wildfires 
that effect that it had was a much, much deeper effect. It went down to the very core of those branches and of those grapes. The damage isn't easy to perceive on the surface. Rather, only after that vineyard, all of those uh, grapes had been plucked, after they had made the wine, it's only after a long period of time that that ashen taste would have eventually come to effect. I tend to think sometimes this is also the case when it comes to our own lives with our own sins and shortcomings. We can perhaps, for example, gossip about a coworker, or we could be envious of other people or their possessions, but on the surface, you wouldn't necessarily think that there's anything wrong. The effects of those actions are much deeper. It's not on the surface, but it's in our very souls. Over time, it begins to have an effect similar, an effect on our future actions, makes it more common for us to continue to gossip or to be envious in the future, for example. Just like that bad vintage, it would eventually, with the regards to our actions, turn sour. Eventually, they would turn to ash. Dear friends, Pentecost is just a couple of weeks away. It is fast approaching. And Christ, the true vine, has a great deal of good works in store for all of us, a great amount that he wants to accomplish through each and every one of us. The question for our reflection this week is a very simple one. What parts of our lives need to be cut back? What parts of our lives need to be pruned away so that they may make more room in our souls for all those great works that God has in store for us? May Christ, the true vine, give us all that wisdom this coming week. God bless you all. Together we stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, who was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life in the world to come. Amen. Christ says, if you remain in me, my words remain in you. You may ask what you will, and it will be granted unto you. Let us pray confidently to the Lord, inspired by his words. For Pope Francis, that we may listen attentively to his guidance and compassion, that we may be inspired by his example and kept firm in our faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our president, all leaders of government, that they may be effective in achieving peace and eliminating poverty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For increase of vocations to the priesthood and religious life. The harvest is plenty and the laborers are few. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by the coronavirus, for all our nurses, doctors, and first responders, for those living alone, those living on the street, those who are sad and lonely, that the comfort of Jesus, who has overcome sin and death, will bring us all light, healing, and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all men and women in our armed forces, protecting freedom and liberty around the world, that they may experience the peace and hope that Christ brings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died and await the resurrection, especially my Matthew J. Viveris, George Vizina, Veronica Bouchard, and John Pellegrino, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Merciful Lord, you are attentive to the prayers of the sorrowful and embrace the humble of heart. Help us to glory in the promise of your eternal life and welcome your resurrection with faith, hope, and love. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by this wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that we, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, through him, the children of light rise to eternal life, and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful, for his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising, the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, Robert, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. We pray this afternoon especially for Matthew J. Viveros, George Vizina, Veronica Bouchard, and for John Pellegrino, for whom this Mass is being offered. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. will now come down the side aisles of the church and lead us from the front of the church to the back of the church and then down the center aisle for the reception of Holy Communion. We ask you to be conscious of the markers on the floor which keep us a little bit more separated and to not to try to crowd up in the back of the church. If you are receiving on the tongue, we ask you just to wait to the end of the communion line. We will now recite a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
body of Christ. Almighty God bless you. Body of Christ.
As announced last weekend, the guidelines for gathering for worship will be improved beginning next week. We've been gathering in this way for nearly a year, since May 31st last year. These guidelines from the diocese and approved by the state are inserted in your bulletin this weekend so you can take a look at them yourself. We mentioned a number of them last weekend, but they are as a two-page form and it's in your bulletin this week. We are thankfully moving forward and getting back to normal, which I'm sure we are all very happy about. A few things to note in addition to what's in the bulletin. First of all, common sense. As we know of late, common sense maybe has not been uh, around so much, uh, but it is a good American virtue. So you use common sense upon entering the church, take your time, find a place to sit. The blue tape will not be there, all the pews will be open, but we're all facing the same direction. Keep that in mind. We will be apart from each other and yet united as one family. Common sense, when we are coming up to communion slowly, will continue the same way for a while, but then we'll go back to the way we were used to, and then taking your time as you leave the church. All common sense. The holy water will be back in the dispensers at the doors of the church. You may utilize it if you like, but it's not required, but it will be there. You actually can go on Google, you can't buy holy water, but you can buy a nice small disposable con uh, container, plastic container, and go to the holy water container on the left, on the right side of the church, get your own holy water, and bring it to church with you and bless yourself from your own bottle. That's fine, that's perfectly acceptable. Um, uh, holy water is a sacramental, take it home with you. That is fine, perfectly fine. But they will be back in the dispensers of the church should you wish to use them. Since the CDC on April 5th came out with a statement that, that the surface spread of the virus is nearly non-existent, we will change the way we'll be sanitizing the church. We hire a, a contractor, Janet King, that comes in and does our church and our school. They will clean the church thoroughly once a week. The ladies of our altar and rosary society will likewise clean our church on Saturday mornings as they always done. And the pews will be sanitized Sunday afternoon as well. This is all in compliance with the CDC. We will discontinue next week sanitizing after every mass as most churches have already done. Masks are still required and we look forward to the day when we can burn them all in front of the church. <laughs> but that day is not yet, so we'll just have to wait for that joyous celebration. Um, as the guidelines state, masks can be omitted for reasons of health, um, but it should be a serious reason of health. We will continue for a while coming up to communion, as they said, the way we have. And at the sign of peace, of course, you can uh, smile at each other. You know, you can tell you're smiling through your mask because of your eyes. Your eyes show your smile um, or wave. Um, I will, will not, as of yet, say, let us offer each other a sign of peace, but we'll say the peace of the Lord be with you always, with your spirit, that will go into the Lamb of God. But if you choose to turn to your neighbor and smile or wave, that is perfectly acceptable. So we move forward, conscious of each other, as we worship as a community of faith. We all want to remain healthy, so I encourage you to get your vaccination and use common sense, not only here in the church, but in everything we, that we do, as we, make to, as we work to make this work together. <clears throat> Normal announcements. Mondays are for Mary in May. So this Monday, we will have adoration all day, and we'll conclude at 7 p.m. with rosary and benediction. We hope you can join us, perhaps during the day for prayer, or maybe in the evening at 7 p.m. for our rosary and benediction. Our so successful feast food uh, that was such a success last year uh, will begin this Thursday, third takeout Thursdays. Um, the menu is my homemade stuffed Sicilian meatloaf, which I am making, horseradish mashed potatoes, which I am making, they're to die for, and cow 
parboil green beans with bacon, tomatoes, and onions, which are to die for. They will, <laughs> um, that will be the uh, main course. It's $12. Uh, there is homemade pasta, which I will make, and my own pesto sauce. Um, and likewise, of course, our famous uh, ice cream sandwiches. Uh, so the, this particular takeout Thursday, the orders are somewhat limited. We can't make as much as 200. It's about 130 orders we'll make. So you need to get your orders in. Uh, same way is by emailing us, olmc141 at gmail.com. For those of you who are online, it's that, olmc141 at gmail.com. I suspect we will sell out by the weekend, by the end of the weekend. So if you want to have takeout Thursday this week with all those wonderful foods you need to order, put away your phones right now, wait till you get out of the church, and then you can order. Likewise, our feast 5050 begins this weekend. As you know, last year we ran the 5050 uh, all during the summer. Uh, so we're starting it this weekend. We'll run it at all of our takeout events. Um, and right to Labor Day. Last year, the total got up to about $3,600, and the winner won approximately $1,800. So in the back of the church, $5 a ticket, five for $20. All we need on your ticket is your last name and your phone number. We began the MPU solicitation with the Catholic Charity Fund Appeal. We're up to, we haven't even counted or sent in what you uh, pledged last weekend. Uh, but I think we're up to about 41, 42,000 of our $58,000 goal. So if you haven't been able to pledge or donate, the envelopes are in the pews. We'd like to take care of that. If we go over our goal, I hope we do, then the remaining monies uh, that are collected remain right here in our parish for our, all the great charitable work that we do. And since all of the new guidelines begin next week, we'd ask you to leave your kneelers down so that we can sanitize our pews. If you can help us with that, the cloths and the sanitizing spray are in the baptistry of the church on your left. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.